this video, we're going to create a join query in Google Sheets that allows you to select different fields or columns with checkboxes. So what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. On this tab we're currently on called results, I have the output of a join query that joins three different data sets together. On this first tab called orders, I have orders which is the main data set for this join query. It just has orders for a furniture wholesale company. And I have two lookup columns in this data set. One is for client ID. And then I have a tab called clients where the client ID is also located and then the corresponding client name. Back on the orders, I also have a column for product ID number and then I have a products table on the products tab that has the product ID along with the product description that it goes with and also the price. So on this output tab I have a query that joins all three tables together and also allows checkbox selections for the different fields from all three tables. So if I want to unselect any of these, you can see it just updates automatically. I can just pick and choose what columns I want to display. So the first thing I want to do on our results tab is once I have my field names populated somewhere on the sheet, I want to add checkboxes to the right. So I'm going to go up to data and then data validation. I'm going to add a rule. We're going to select checkbox. Click done. I'm going to check one. I'm actually just going to select all of these. Hit control D to select them all. So now we're going to add an if statement to the right. So what we want to test is whether or not this checkbox is checked. So we're going to reference that cell, K2. If it's checked, it has a value of true. If it is unchecked, it has a value of false. So if it equals true or checked, what we want to do is display the word column and then use the AND symbol to join this to the column number. So what we want to do here is dynamically start this at a value of 1. So what I'm going to insert is the row function. That will return whatever row we're currently on. We're currently on row 2, but we want this to start at 1. So I'm going to subtract 1 from that to get our count started at 1. I'm going to use another AND symbol because we need to add a comma after that because this is actually going to be linked to our query we're going to reference each column number that we want to select and they have to be separated by a comma so I'm gonna add a comma right after that that is what we want to display if the checkbox is checked if it is unchecked we just want to display nothing so that's gonna be our false argument So I'm gonna let that fill down and now we have our column selections that we can eventually link to our query. Now, obviously, the number of columns we're going to select is always unknown. And the last column reference can't have a comma after it. And just bear with me on that part because there is a trick to get around that. But I'll show you once we're actually inputting our query formula. The next thing we want to do is go to each of our different tab tables and name the ranges. That's just going to make our life so much easier when we're inputting this query formula. So I'm going to go to the orders table. I'm going to select columns A through E. I'm going to go up to data and then named ranges. We're going to call this range orders. Click done. 
Now I'm going to also name each of my two lookup columns in my orders table. So I have the client ID lookup column. I'm just going to call this lookup1. Do the same for my product column. We'll call this lookup2. I'm going to go to my clients table. I'm going to name this lookup column client LC for client lookup column. Here is the column I want to pull back. So I'm going to call this client results. I'm going to go to the product table. My lookup column is actually in column C. So we'll call this products LC. I have two results columns. So the description is going to be product results one. The price is going to be results two. So that is everything we need. So we're going to go back to our results tab and begin inputting our formula. So one important thing before inputting the formula, make sure that in your results area there are enough columns so that there is always one blank column left over if every single column is selected. Otherwise this is not going to work. So we're going to begin with our query statement. First input is the data set we want to query off of. In this case, as you know, we have three that are not on the same sheet. So what we need to do is use curly brackets to join these ranges together because curly brackets and sheets allow you to join ranges that are not physically together. So here is where our named ranges are going to make everything easier. So we have our orders named range, comma. And what a comma means inside curly brackets is display these joined ranges side by side. And that's what we want. So the next ranges we're going to bring in are actually going to be lookups based on the lookup column named ranges in our orders named range. So we're going to use the X lookup, but the X lookup does not display multiple rows at the same time in its output. The query is an array output, so it displays multiple rows. So we need to nest this with inside the array formula to convert the X lookup to an array output. So we have X lookup, our search key is going to be our lookup named range one. Our lookup range on our clients table is going to be our client lookup column named range. Our result range is going to be our client results named range. Now these next arguments are optional in the X lookup, but for this fourth one, I would recommend putting a value of nothing if it, error or NA because we don't want to display NAs. So we're going to repeat this for the other ranges we want to bring in. So we have the array formula X lookup. Our search key is going to be lookup named range two this time. We have our lookup range on the products table, which is going to be our products lookup column. We want to pull back our product results named range one. Again, we have our value of NA. Now, I'm going to repeat this because everything's going to be the same on our products results two as one, except for the result range. So I'm going to change this to result name range two. Don't forget to end this with a closing curly bracket, otherwise this will not work. So we have our second argument of our query statement, the select statement. So that is enclosed in double quotes, but we need to link this 
to our column selection cells over here to the right. So I'm going to end our select statement temporarily with an ending double quote using an and symbol to join this to our cells. And I'm going to copy this and symbol because we're going to repeat this. So our first cell we want to link this to is L2. Then we have L3, L4, and just repeating this to capture all of our column selections here. one final and symbol to join this back to our select statement so I'm gonna reopen our double quotes and as I was saying earlier we have an unknown number of columns in our selections <clears throat> and the last one cannot have a comma after it so what we need to do in our select statement is add a blank column on the end so that it doesn't matter how many columns we have selected so to add a blank column on the end, you're just going to add a single quote space single quote. <clears throat> so one thing I would recommend at this point is adding a where condition so that we don't pull in blank rows. Because when we named our ranges, we, we selected the entire columns, and that includes blank rows. So you might want to add a where condition, reference any one of your columns, and just say is not null. Finally, we have the number of headers we have in our data set, which is one. So this pulls in everything. You can see there is that blank column. So if you don't want to display that header, <clears throat> what we can do is after our where statement we can use the keyword label reference our blank column and then after that add two single quotes without a space that gets rid of that header and now I can deselect and reselect any columns I want to display or not display well, that is all for now. Thanks for watching.